not a walkthrough, playthrough, review, anything like that. It's just me playing the game badly, so you can see what it looks like. Okay then, having had this recommended to me after playing Double Dragon on the Game Boy, this is Double Dragon Advance on the Game Boy Advance. I'm playing it on a Retro Specs 32 so that I can display it on my TV for EDIA, e e easier recording. What the hell is EDIA? Uh, I need to put my other glasses on, I can't see very well. I've got my reading glasses on. Okay, this all looks very familiar. That actually looks a lot like the uh, Atari Lynx version, though I think there's probably a good bit more detail. The Lynx one was quite zoomed in. Nice. This would probably look better on the small screen. Get off me. Come on, get off. What am I... What, what? What do I do? What? This is... Okay. I don't know how I did... What? This is where actually a, a real GBA would be advantageous. Because that would work with the shoulder buttons. It does look like he's pulling the guy over to give him a... Um, Yeah, we won't go there. What you're seeing here is a complete lack of skill on my part because I don't know the moves. Ah, oh, but that's a good move. Oh, so is that. I like that. That button doesn't do anything. Or, no, it does do something. I don't know what that is. Is it block? I'll oh, get up, you fool. Oh, you fool. Oh, okay, we'll do some more of that then. Oops, yeah. Run straight into his fist. Because that's what you do, isn't it? Oh, that's nice. Do we go up the ladder? Let's go up the ladder. Hello. That's some nice spandex. Oh, it's that geezer. I've, I would say I've always wondered what he looks like in more detail. He's a funny looking geezer on the, on the Game Boy. But he's not exactly normal looking here, is he? It's him. It's him. Go on. Smack it, oh god. That's nice. Oh, come on, I wanted the whip. Oh no. She's gonna whip it. Whip it good. Spot of Devo there. You've got to, haven't you? Just need some kind of plant pot on your head for a hat. Get up. Get, oh. It's no time for a nap. Oof. Come on. Oh. He's just prancing around like a prancing bloke. Surrounded by other guys who are somewhat more skilled. It's definitely more challenging than the Game Boy version because you do get more than two enemies on screen at once. Or oh, even if you can beat up three of them in one go. Come on, get up. Get oh don't get up into his fist. Oh. Oh. It's not bleeding Swan Lake. Kick him in the face. He is, he's pirouetting and, and just doing, you know, all the ballet moves. He needs a tutu. Oh, that was pretty... Oh. 
Get up, get up, get, get, oh. Oops. Come on now. No time for a nap in the oil drums. There's a cat. Never mind all these geezers. Look, there's a cat. Can we do anything with the cat? It's, I like cats. Oops. Oh. Credit five. What do we do? Push start. Yes, please. This would very likely be more. I think I've said. No, I have said it. It would very, oh, very likely be more playable on um, on a proper GBA. The uh, the retro specs doesn't lend itself well to um, pulling off all of the moves because you want shoulder buttons and it doesn't have them. It's got like four buttons, like on a snares. And uh, two of those buttons, I say like on a SNES, that has shoulder buttons as well. But you know, it's that four buttons in a diamond formation that don't automatically lend themselves to having two pushed at the same time in some combinations. That big geezer, I'm sure it's just the other big geezer, but in, with, with like blackface, as they call it. He's, he, it, it's, you know, that's, it's not the done thing. Oh. Gear up. Oh, I jumped onto his guts. Oh, balls. I want more of this. Yeah. I like that. That's a good move. I don't know if that would have worked on the Game Boy version. Billy, where is your boss, the head of the Shadow Warriors? I have no idea. And who's Billy? Oh, am I Billy? Is he saying that? I thought he was saying it to Billy. Duh. You only work for him. You don't know where he is. Well, then, how do you get paid? Wearing a mask. Okay. Find the monster wearing a mask at the Rundown Factory. It's the factory where they make rundowns. Ah, oh, yes, I recognise this. Oh. I like that move. I mean, it's a cheap thing to just keep doing it, but it works. Unlike some of the other moves that I do. Oh. What's that guy doing up there? Like, announce his presence. Oh. You know that? Oh, that was lame. Very lame. More Swan Lake. Oof. Oof. People actually say oof, do they? Like me. I just said it. Oh dear. Watch out for the hole. God, ganged up on a bit here. Gives a job. Go on. Yossa Hughes. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you, you weren't around in the early 80s. In England. Or Britain. I should say. Come on, go this way. They look like big chocolate bars. Some kind of chocolate wafer bar, perhaps. Yeah. Or biscuit bar. I don't know. Here's that geezer again. This looks like my brother in the 80s. This is like my brother thought he looked in the 80s, but honestly he didn't. Get that... Ugh. Oh, yeah, that's how you do it. 
And again. Oh look, there's another one. This one's got an afro. Uh oh, I woke him up. Get up. It's, I know it's, oh bollocks. I know it's cheap to keep doing the same thing. I said it already, but I'm gonna because it works. Or maybe we'll go up here. Perhaps he can't climb. He does look like my brother wishes he looked. Imagine that guy, but skinny. Come on, ain't you dead yet? Oops. Okay then, we'll go up here. Fine, I don't mind. Come on. Come on if you think you're hard enough. Lame. Come on, get up here. Yeah, wusses. Scared of heights. That's what it is. They don't like the heights. Of course, I now have the problem that I can't really easily get down there without getting clobbered. Oh, um, okay. Or we could just fall out of the level, because that's clever. Uh-oh. Men in black. We'll soon be getting accosted by aliens, probably. Oh. Kick one way, then the other. And then onto the floor. What are they doing? Ah. Get up. Oof. Oh, balls. Getting hammered. What's he doing? Ah, oh, we're having another nap. Yeah, okay. We'll stop there. But uh, that is cool. That is Double Dragon on the GBA. And you're right, it is better than on the Game Boy. I still love it on the Game Boy because that's the version I, I won't say I grew up with. It's the first version of the game I ever played and nostalgia where with this I don't have any nostalgia. But it is very good. The graphical detail is cool. I should play it on the small screen and see how it looks there because it's probably great. Um, you know, the resolution isn't really suited for the big 32 inch LCD screen. But impressive nonetheless. Okay, thank you for watching. Hello, today's question for Q&A is from Richard Heath, linked to his channel down there. He asks, for Q&A, continuing with the arcade theme, that will have been a little while ago, um, do you think there is any way a modern arcade could last in today's current climate? We have one in Bristol, linked to their website below. I wasn't quite sure if it worked though, there was just something about the atmosphere that didn't quite feel right. How do you go about running a modern arcade, if given the opportunity? <sighs> I wouldn't, in short. Um, do I think an arcade can survive? Here's the thing. Arcades, back in the day, when I were a lad, bring on the Hobus music, some of you will know what I mean. Um, when I was a kid, or a teen, arcades were <sighs> magical places uh, filled with darkness and foreboding and a, an element of danger. But the thing about them that made them special, and it's what kept them going for a long time, they provided an experience that you couldn't have at home. Um, it was a long while before any kind of gaming arrived in the home that in any way compared with what was in the arcades. I mean, Pong came out in, well, 72 in the US. I don't think it got over here for a while after that. I first played it in around 74, maybe 75. 
um, and it was pretty new here then. But anyway, uh, Pong machines in the home didn't become really commonplace until significantly later into the 70s. And, you know, you had other arcade games appearing, very rudimentary racing games. I mean, we're talking before Space Invaders, before Pac-Man, before Galaxian, all of that. There were things like Gunfight, uh, things like, uh, was it Up Periscope, was it Seawolf, whatever it was. You know, the submarines, you're shooting torpedoes at ships, or you're controlling a ship and dropping depth charges on submarines. Stuff like this. It was basic stuff, driving games that were top-down. And they were like, these things were video equivalents of electromechanical games that already already existed and in some ways visually inferior but it was the novelty here was this game on a screen shock horror and you couldn't do that in your home so people went to the arcades for this novel experience and they progressed you know eventually you could get they didn't call them Pong machines that you played at home. It was called a TV game. Certainly when I, when I was growing up, no one said, have you got a Pong machine? Everyone said, have you got a TV game? And it was Pong and variants of Pong. And 77, the Atari came out. I knew people who had them. Um, and they were amazing, to my mind. Loved them. But were they an arcade game experience? No, Space Invaders on the Atari was nothing like Space Invaders in the arcade. And it came out significantly later than Space Invaders in the arcade anyway. And this was how things were for a long time. You had home gaming systems, you had, you had your Spectrum, and you could play a pretty decent version of Space Invaders or Galaxian on the Spectrum. It wasn't arcade perfect, but it was playable enough. Um, and it was fun. But at that point, gaming in the arcades was things like, um, I don't know about Street Fighter, but you certainly had things like, I remember watching Bomb Jack and thinking, couldn't do that on your Spectrum. Um, graphics moved on, sound moved on, just the technology got better and it stayed ahead of whatever it was you were playing at home. The Mega Drive came out and it was being touted as arcade games in your home. Well, it did fair approximations of arcade games, but it still, you knew it wasn't as good. Uh, some games were more fun, even though they weren't as good, because you got to play more, like Super Monaco Grand Prix. Sure, graphically, the arcade game absolutely stomped on it and, and crushed it and left it for dead. But you got your money's worth with that Mega Drive cartridge because you got a whole like championship season. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Career mode kind of thing. Um, so, that you had fair approximations PlayStation 1 era this is where it started getting difficult because you had Ridge Racer in the arcades and it was fantastic you had Daytona in the arcades I wasn't a fan but you know it was technically impressive and then you could play these in the home and well we'll forget about the Daytona on the Saturn <laughs> but um, Ridge Racer on the PS1 was um, no it wasn't arcade perfect at all but the experience it gave you was really it was good enough it was enough to make you after you've been playing your Mega Drive games and maybe if you were me your 32X games and your Amiga games and stuff Ridge Racer on the PS1 was good enough to make you go wow and then arcade manufacturers kind of started doing things on the cheap and instead of making custom hardware to make stuff that was better than you could play in the home, they started using home hardware to make games cheaply so they didn't have to invest as much. They were using PS1 hardware to make arcade games. And you could play that arcade game and look at it and you knew this was based on the PS1. And it was like, well, why should I put money into this? I could just go home and play my own console at home. 
Um, and that's where things started to slip. You did still get impressive gaming things, con not consoles, uh, cabinets and stuff, but they became fewer and further between. And it reached a point where there stopped being a reason to go to the arcade. The gap between arcade hardware and home hardware got narrower and narrower until there really there was no gap. The only thing that set an arcade game apart from something you could play at home was the cabinet itself. Did it have something you could sit on, like a motorbike? I mean, Manx TT, Superbike fantastic game love it yes you could play a pretty decent version of it on the Saturn obviously not arcade perfect but fun but you played that in the arcades you got this bloody great big bike to sit on and you tilt the whole thing and you have your feet up on the foot pegs and it's great um, you know gun games they stayed popular because while you could have light guns on your home system so yeah I mean light guns were yeah, you could do light guns on LC. Could you do light gun? No, you couldn't. PS1 and, and PS2, you were still playing on a, on a cathode ray tube. So you could still have gun games. But it still wasn't... Didn't compare with what you had in the arcades. But now, to get back to the question, how could an arcade, a modern arcade, survive... It would have to have hardware that set it apart from what you can do at home. And does that exist? I haven't been into an arcade in years because I don't know where there is one. There are retro arcades. I could probably more easily find a retro arcade than I could a modern one. And the thing is, for a modern arcade to survive you've got to pull in as many people as you possibly can because the hardware that's going to be in it is going to be massively expensive because it's going to have to be fancy cabinets. If it's not going to be retro, it's got to be way expensive. So you've got to pull in as many people as you can and that means family friendly. So it's got to be, it's got to feel safe. It's got to feel friendly. It's got to have maybe a cafe, probably not a bar, no smoking, no dodgy behaviour, no dodgy looking people. It's going to be full of screaming kids. Mind you, they were when I was a kid. But, you know, um, the whole experience will be completely different. And maybe it'll survive. Uh, but no, it absolutely won't be the same. If you're looking for that classic arcade experience that you had as a teen, you're just not going to have it. Um, if you go to a retro arcade, it's probably going to be full of people like me. And you're not going to have that element of danger because the people are going to probably need a Zimmer frame. <laughs> Maybe not quite that bad, but you know. Um, uh, creaky middle-aged geezers. Going, when I were a lad, I used to know how to beat this game, but now my arthritis holds me back. Um, yeah... I think arcades can survive by somehow being more impressive than what you can play at home, but you're never going to have the experience that we had as teens. Um, and the worry is as well, when you've got these classic arcades, I have read about cases where people, it's been a labour of love setting up their classic arcade full of old cabinets that have been reconditioned and, and got working and everything and they've had their grand opening and then a bunch of local yobs have just come in and trashed the lot and it's heartbreaking you know labor of love ruined in one night the first night um, you know you couldn't open an arcade like that here you just couldn't um, and you couldn't open a modern arcade here because no one would have the money because I, th that kind of stuff would be... It would need to bring in the numbers and it would need to be expensive. So it would have to be somewhere middle class uh, with a certain high population of a certain demographic. Yeah. No, I would not... In, I wouldn't dream of trying to open a, a modern arcade. I don't have a head for business wouldn't know how to get the investment or, or source the stuff or any, anything but you know just from 
what I know about arcades and what they were like and, and what they were like last time I went in one barely viable I wouldn't try it maybe I'm just a bit negative about these kind of things anyway but yeah I mean I, there's a time I would have said virtual reality that would be the way forward but now home VR is a thing anyway you, you can get VR quite easily on the PS3 or on the PC or even on your mobile phone so that isn't a draw anymore either mm. okay I think that answers the question. I am sure there will be plenty of people with some interesting thoughts on that that I look forward to hearing because, I mean, this is just my opinion and I might be a bit blinkered on the subject. So uh, thoughts on that will be interesting. Mm, OK, thank you for watching. Um, wait, yes, anyone else who's got any questions they'd like, in, like answering in a video like this, ask them down there in the comment section. Begin your question with 4 Q and A, so I know not to just answer it in the comments. Thank you for watching. So I said, you can just stick that joystick right up your. Oh, hello. Um, I'm Isambard Montague the Third, and you've been watching Steve Benway, Retro Gaming Collector. If you'd like to see more of his videos. Click the subscribe button, and if you'd like to catch up with some of his 1500 videos in his back catalogue, have a look through his playlists. Right, that'll be 50 quid.